Welcome back, everybody. We have made it all the way here to the finals of the Bremen Pokemon Regional Championships. My name's Ben Kiriaku, joined here by David Partington. And, oh my god, we've had so many rounds this weekend. Uh, so many sets of Pokemon played. Excellent people to feature players, of course, of such a high standard. But now we are going to see the final match between these two players. And I am so excited. David, how are you feeling? Feeling really good, actually. Like, um, we've had some really high level play throughout the top cuts, and we've been able to see so much of that here. Now, with Giovanni Piscitelli from Italy and Maurice Uteg from Germany, they've made it this far already and i think reese was only kind of aiming for the top eight just so he can get his welds invite but now he's actually made it to the final which is incredible whereas uh giovanni he's making he's aiming for that day two so he's got a lot of championship points now already so he may have even secured it already we'll have to see how much that extra for the final get gets him but obviously it's also the glory too absolutely and looking at the bracket that you can see in front of you on your screen giovanni on the left hand side of the bracket uh, dispatching Richard Hodge in the top eight, playing against Eric Rios, which we saw in a previous stream round to make it all the way to the finals. On the other end of the bracket, we have Maurice uh, beating Frederick, a new player that we got to showcase and having an absolutely fantastic early tournament run, uh, making it to the top eight. And of course, in the last round that we were able to showcase against Julio, taking it 2 and 0. Uh, so these players, uh, a convincing run, I think, to the final match for both of them. Yeah, and when you look at that bracket as well, you could see how the Zashin Kyoga teams are the ones that are like pushing it through to the, the top. Mm -hmm. Like the Veltel's been left in the wayside, both the Lunadons are gone now. So it is just Zashin Kyoga. So if you were in any doubt about what you may want to bring to another tournament, I would maybe recommend Zashin Kyoga because I think. In all of these teams, there's not a lot of variance. Maybe the, the item on the Kyogre is maybe the main thing that kind of changes up a little bit. We've seen Assault Vest, Life Orb, Mystic Water, but the rest of the supported cast is pretty similar as far as it goes. Maybe just the odd little bits of bulk and whatever training. So it's it's a pretty consistent option versus a lot of the metagame right now. Yeah, and I think that's that's the important thing. I mean, we saw we saw Rinya's son uh, was able to do really well, and that had answers to most things. Now it seems like we the 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 people playing the game, the players have managed to find a way to uh, circumvent that team, and it's sort of dropped off in popularity. Some of the elements still remain. You can see Julio was running like that Charizard uh, that was, I think, a key piece in that Sun Rat matchup. And of course, now Zacian Kyoga has, I think, developed in, into a, a stage where it's you know, really well refined, and that refinement does pay off for these events. It does. So now we're going to go to the players for the last time for this weekend. Giovanni Bisciteli, 2021 Battle Dome 4, Top 4, Ocean International's Top 32, X9 League 2 champion, and the Washington Top 8 uh, like finish in 2019 too. So lots of amazing finishes here that's gotten him a lot of prizes, a lot of championship points necessarily too. And he's ready to take that final hurdle into this final game. Yeah, and yeah, of course, we do have Maurice on the other side. Uh, EU International Championships just a few weeks ago, getting that top 64 uh, place in there. Victory Road, February Season Challenge, top 32. And of course, in one of the finalist teams for MPA. And we saw him on stream yesterday after he won his match, uh, shouting out the teammates that he had in the MPA tournament uh, as to helping him get prepared uh, and really improve his game in this format. And that's something that uh, you definitely see within the Pokemon community. The more friends that you have to practice with and bounce ideas off of, the more effective you can become. Absolutely. And don't forget, now, this is your final time to vote. Who do you think is going to take home the title of regional champion 2022 of Bremen? Is it exclamation mark genius, a genius VGC, Giovanni Piscitelli, or is it exclamation mark Kamikaze, Maurice Utek of Germany? So um, I think uh, having seen both of these players' tournament runs, I like, I'd be interested to look back at like the polls from the last few 
uh, rounds as well to see who was actually backing these people and like how maybe that has changed now. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, whatever the result, uh, we ha still have the game afterwards, and these players are getting themselves set up, getting ready. I really do wonder. We've seen, we saw the last round where we had a, a mirror match with Eric Rios and Giovanni Pichatelli. Uh, we saw some very different approaches to how that mirror was played out. I'm really looking forward to seeing how these players adapt as well, because in the mirror, those little details are so, so important. Yeah, as well as the positioning of your Pokemon as well. So stuff like Incineroar, which I, I maybe doubt would come to like the rain matchup, but like the speeds of your parting shots, for instance, is really he like the slower one is obviously a lot better for there because you get to you have the momentum to switch in as for what your opponents already switched in. Mm -hmm. Um you know, we don't have that weather war here, so it's not as important when your Kyogre comes in versus the other one. But for something like uh like, like a Rillaboom coming in at the right time for be able to provide grassy glide pressure onto an opposing Kyogre might be really key, as we saw in that Eric versus Giovanni game in top four. Absolutely, and we see Giovanni uh, taking a hint from Eric Rios, maybe, uh, leading out the Zacian and Zapdos in the lead, as we see Maurice bringing the Grimmsnarl, which we didn't actually see feature in Giovanni's match previously as well as that Zapdos. Zapdos was so important in this realm because uh, it has that eerie impulse pressure and we'll see if that makes an impact. Not this turn though, Incineroar not affected by it at all. Not so much, no. So Giovanni going on the defensive here, positioning around, going for the protect on the Zacian, scouting out what Marisa gonna go for. Uh, no Dynamax on his end either. Grimstar going for the Thunder Wave into the Zacian, an excellent slot, and the, there's the area impulse you mentioned, Ben, into the Incineroar. So not a lot happening this turn, but it does maybe slightly shift momentum into Giovanni's end because he does have now the fake out option this turn. However, we did see in previous games, Static being a really big like uh, piece that mm. made a big difference to some of these games. So a fake out into Zapdos, may trigger it any attack from zashian to zapdos may trigger it and if suddenly especially the zashian is paralyzed it's suddenly under speeding a kyogre absolutely but uh maurice i think fearing quite rightly so that the thunder wave wouldn't be able to even go off at all with a combination of fake out and the offensive pressure from the zashian and that's exactly what we're starting to see here fake out coming out onto the kyogre that switched in for uh, that Grim Snarl and a Behemoth Blade following it up from the Zacian. Really like this play from Giovanni because uh, Zapdos is kind of not really doing anything against the Incineroar and the Zacian. You see that Thunderbolt there, uh, you know, 60% damage on a Zacian is pretty good. Does put the Zacian in range of another Behemoth Blade coming out from Maurice's Zacian. Depending on how they're trained, that could be impactful if the speed's, uh, speed advantage is on Maurice's side. But uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, Kyogre can deal with the Zacian plenty uh, well enough, I think. It can. Kyogre has now come in. It's almost down to like half health now. So, you, uh, but it's still taking its fake out turn. So, it is able to make potentially go for like a water move of some sort, maybe an origin pulse. Um, not a lot of reason to Dynamax it necessarily either, because Behemoth Blade is going to do the same amount of damage either way. But if Giovanni is carrying that play rough, that is something that could KO it. So maybe Maurice is going on the safer side, Dynamaxing his Kyogre, not wanting to go down to the play rough either, and maybe securing a one shot on either of these Pokemon if we don't see a Protect. Yeah, but Protect we see actually, as it turns out that Giovanni has gone on the defensive a little bit with his uh, Zacian, not wanting to take a Max Geyser coming out from this Kyogre. Hurricane going into the Incineroar, doing a good amount of damage actually, uh, also picking up the knockout with that Max Geyser. So great targeting there from Maurice, able to knock out one of the problem Pokemon, I think. Uh, and if Maurice does indeed have his Zacian in the back, which I think is probably pretty likely actually, um, if the Grim Snarl's on the field, you, you kind of need damage output if you don't have Rillaboom on your side of the field. Um, then uh, I think that's a, a really good way of approaching the game. Yeah, and now we've seen Giovanni's all four of his Pokemon now. He's not brought his Kyogre to this matchup. So Maurice uh, is definitely getting a different game plan out of his four Pokemon versus Giovanni. And he's also gone for the Dynamax first. So if Giovanni can successfully maneuver around this Kyogre or do the necessary damage to it, or even take a knockout, Ooh. he is looking pretty strong going into the late game here, especially with maybe a Dynamax late game Zapdos. So yeah, 
Tiger does go down to that grassy glide, showing that even if it was Dynamax, it would just get completely one shot. Zapdos takes a little bit of damage from the Sacred Sword, and in return goes for the Hurricane's Verilaboom, which does pick up the Ooh. one hit knockout. Yeah, that's a big difference from uh, the previous set because we saw the Zapdos is hurricaning into uh, the Rillabooms and not quite picking up the KO. So that KO is huge there, but the Rillaboom equally has done its job. I think the big thing that's happened now is that uh, Giovanni has had two Pokemon knocked out. Those two Pokemon are the supportive cast in the Rillaboom and Incineroar. So there's no more Fake Out. There's no more Intimidate. Uh, Zacian will be locked on the field and... If you're locked on the field in front of a Grimmsnarl that's just coming in, uh, you may be going to get paralyzed. Quite possibly, Ben. So Zapdos versus Zapdos once again here. Maurice still has the eerie impulse on his hand. So, and we haven't seen the speed interactions between these particular Zapdoses either. And so Maurice may be able to get an eerie impulse off before Giovanni's Zapdos gets to move, which could be pretty key here, because I think, as we're seeing from Giovanni, he is Dynamaxing his Zapdos. Yeah, in... Uh, it'd be really surprising to see the Zacian do anything but protecting in this turn, I think. Uh, Zapdos likely wanting to go on the offensive and target down that Grimmsnarl. Uh, if you can maybe knock it out this turn, uh, maybe... Oh, no Thunder Wave coming out and no Protect from the Zacian. Really good read there from Giovanni. Behemoth Blade coming out from uh, the Zacian on his side of the field directly targeting that Grimmsnarl, knocking it out in one yeah. shot. Yeah. Light screen on the field is going to stop damage from Giovanni Zapdos, but actually Maurice is, uh, yeah, has really taken the disadvantage in that turn, having lost his Grimmsnarl without getting that Thunder Wave onto the Zacian. And also, the Airstream coming out from Giovanni Zapdos will ensure that uh, Zacian on uh, Giovanni's side of the field will be faster than Maurice's Zacian if it is in the back. Yes, we see Giovanni Zapdos go first here before Maurice's Zapdos. So we don't know if it's a speed tie yet or not, but it could be at, at least, um, or just or at least Maurice's Zapdos is slower. But Zacian now comes in for Maurice, but because of that really critical airstream, even though Giovanni Zacian is taking a little bit of damage, so it's now in range of another Behemoth Blade, it is definitely going to be going faster this turn. So we can either target down the Zacian for a, a double up for a knockout, or it can target the Zapdos here with a, a potential play rough if, it, if he has it. Yeah, play rough would be quite nice in this situation, but here we see it, the first Behemoth Blade coming down, left on 50 hit points. Max Lightning coming out from the Zapdos is not oh. up the knockout here, and it will be Maurice that is able to get an attack off with his own Zacian, as well as his is Zapdos. Here we see it, the Behemoth Blade coming out from Zapdos on Maurice's side of the field. It is targeting down that Zacian. It is enough to pick up the knockout here and the Zacian goes back to Giovanni. Zapdos versus the world and Zapdos is not looking too healthy. We've already seen one area impulse. The Roost coming off on Zapdos on Maurice's side of the field will enable one more eerie impulse to come out at the very least and so uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a war of attrition i think here yeah i think that's well predicted ben especially if giovanni zapdos has the roost as well once it's dynamax is finished <laughs> because uh, we are in a position where zapdos could go for a protect like we saw that lightning do almost like very little damage so potentially even through a protect it may not even get the ko i think it's gonna be really close um mm. So otherwise, that would be a pretty safe target here. Um, you could go for the Max Lightning to Zapdos, get a big chunk of damage down, but there's going to be a lot of Roost and Eerie Impulses, but the big difference is that Giovanni's Zapdos is at minus two special attack from the previous Eerie Impulse, and Maurice's Zapdos is not. Mm, absolutely, and uh, probably going to be at minus four after this turn. We see there, not even close, Zapdosation living on 14 hit points, going down to minus four, and it, actually, like, okay, so... So I'm kind of wondering here, David, what do you think? Does the Thunderbolt pick up the knockout on Zacian or not? Yes, I think it does. I think it the does. Thunderbolt does, because we did it did about 10, Max Light did about 10 damage through the Protect. So it's going to do about 40 damage normally. And if you've got a slightly reduced amount of power from the Thunderbolt compared to the uh, Max Lightning, that should still do like about, about 30 damage or so. Yeah. Um, so 
and like because it's it, they're flying type, they aren't affected by the extra try. But he's actually he will have some wall HP. He gets a huge play of. Oh my god, hitch point. Zapdos on Boris's end outspeeds it still and. Oh, oh my goodness, gets the game. You know what? There's lots of maps going on in this game, and uh, we got it wrong. <laughs> we got it wrong. The Zacian surviving that Thunderbolt key, key turn there. I think for making the game finish at a reasonable amount of time, because if these two Zapdoses were left to their own devices, with those eerie impulses, with that roost potential, we we might be looking at like multiple crits in order to finish the game, and um, you know, uh, all, all the game's going down to time, of course, and it being decided on other factors than the skill of these players. Yeah, I know exactly. Like that was a really intense set. Like for a mirror match too, it just shows how like exciting it can actually get because um, it really comes down to the differences between the Pokemon, and it it's, it comes down like to a, like a raw game of chess. You know, like you've got the same pieces, you just yeah. need to play it differently. It could yeah. still be a, like a really really interesting game, as we saw here, and like that really critical second eerie impulse at the end there. I think definitely yeah. made the difference. Yeah. This is actually yeah. living with a slither of health to be able to get that really big attack down. I, I mean, in the in the end game, I think we're even still in Maurice's corner to be able to take that, even if Zashin had gone down, because of the special attacking difference, it probably would have down to, down to critical hits, assuming Giovanni had the roost too, but it just kind of seals it up definitely. To sh and again, showing a little bit of bulk on Zashin is very good. It really is. And also the bulk on the Zapdos as well, that play rough left with 8 HP on the Zapdos. And that's some pretty significant training if i'm not mistaken on the zapdos in its defensive capabilities oh alongside the eerie impulse it makes a lot of sense to train your zapdos to be more physically defensive and survive those hits from zation because hey you know there's zation on lots of teams it's a really really strong pokemon so you've got to be prepared if you're playing this sort of composition to be able to uh trade effectively with the zation but yeah just so so close. Also worth noting that if that's a, if either of those Zapdoses were on the ground as well and benefiting from electric terrain, the Zacian would have been able to be knocked out. Yeah. And also, if either Zapdos had had uh, opted to go for Rising Voltage rather than Thunderbolt, uh, would have been a little bit of a different end game as well there. So yeah, again, you know, all of these decisions making so much impact in the mirror match. They are, and we saw it right there as well. And really interesting to see like how different play like, each player played the mirror match very differently like mm. they bought completely four, four different completely completely four completely different pokemon four got completely it. different pokemon. Yeah, so, we got there we got there so yeah we saw sashin zapdos rilla and insin for giovanni and maurice had grimsnarl zapdos sashin kyogre really different so uh, i wonder if giovanni having lost that game may change things up to adapt to what Maurice's successful um, game plan ended up being. I mean, there was that really critical turn where Giovanni protected his Sashian, but Maurice didn't fall for that at all. He doubles into the Incin instead and just gets that KO, So, yeah. which was a lot of like potential damage that Giovanni could have got off that turn that he didn't. Yeah. Um, so I think just that one turn difference could have like really made a difference in the endgame. Yeah, absolutely. And it's quite an interesting uh, thing about how you approach it because uh, not bringing the Kyogre may... Oh, the face of it seemed like it's a a difficult thing to do and not really that intuitive. But if you don't bring the Kyogre and your opponent brings the Rillaboom, it's kind of like the Rillaboom's a little bit of a dead slot and it's not really doing too much. You've got the Zapdos, you've got the Zacian, you may have the Incineroar, and suddenly the Grim, uh, sorry, the Rillaboom on your opponent's side of the field is yeah, it's pretty pretty neutral. It's not really doing too much other than supporting the team with Fake Out, uh, and then. In the next game, if your opponents adjust, knowing that the Rillaboom's not doing too much, and then you bring the Kyogre without having the Rillaboom to contest it with that grassy glide, you kind of run away with the game. So, like, there's a little bit of a, a decision-making process about how you're not only approaching game one, but what you're thinking about in the game two and subsequently maybe game three. Yeah, I, I think so too. So, um, going to game two, Please have a little vote into the little poll, exclamation mark genius, or exclamation mark Kamikaze, as to who you think you think is going to win. Obviously, Kamikaze is taking the game one, so I can understand. You might think he might win the next one, but we know Giovanni, he's been able to like take a, a, a lot of 
swings and momentum into his favor. Um, a lot of like late game Dynamaxes, and even with the earlier ones, he's been able to clinch it out. And we've seen that each player using their Zapdos with that eerie impulse with great effect because the main two Dynamax targets of these two teams is the Kyogre or the Zapdos, both special attackers. And if you can get an eerie impulse off on either of those, it enables you to stall out an opponent's Dynamax, whether you've Dynamax first or not. Yeah, it, it is those decisions and the details that do make the most impact, I think, in, in these mirror matches. I mean, speaking of Eerie Impulse, we didn't actually see too much going on with the Roost in that last game, but that's another thing that, that really does make a difference. Zapdos is such a key piece in this mirror match. It's able to survive attacks coming out from the uh, Zacian. Um, it's able to get that Eerie Impulse off against the Kyogre. And so it's really, you know, it, it really underpins a lot of the strategy and the long-term games and even longer-term game with Roost there, just making sure it's still available um, for play. We do have now, though, uh, a little bit of statistics for you uh, just while we get these players set up, showing you the, uh, the compositions of Pokemon that have been most effective in this tournament. We can, and as you can see, Zash and Kyogre has been very popular and therefore doing very well here. Zash and Caloric Shadow has been actually the second most common pairing, often with that Defiant Thunderous that we've seen quite a lot of, and then Lunadon, which we've seen a couple of in Top Cut 2, being also quite popular. So the more popular archetypes have been the more the ones we've seen in Top Cut, which is which does make sense. So there's nothing like niche that's been cutting through yet, and we can see the Calyrex Ice being a little bit less popular <laughs> this time around. So uh, we're going to cut to the game now. Game two, these two players are ready. This could also be our final match. Maurice Utek of Germany needs one more win, and he the championship title of Bremen Regional Champion is his. It certainly could be. And I I, I'm really struggling to figure out what these players are going to do to react. We did see Giovanni in the last match uh, against Eric Rios switch up his leads in all three games. And there's definitely certain players that approach the game in the way that they know the matchup, they know the flow charts, they understand what they've got to do to react to what their opponent's bringing, and they just stick to their guns. They use the same lead scenario. Uh, Giovanni not uh, taking that approach does tend to switch it up. Uh, Maurice, uh, do you know what? I'm not 100% sure whether he did want to switch up his leads uh, in the previous games that we managed to see him in. But here we are, Maurice, sticking with that Grim style, sticking with that Zapdos, and the Zacian and now Rillaboom coming out from Giovanni. So Zapdos staying in the back and a little bit of fake out pressure on the field. There is this time. So Giovanni does switch it out slightly. It's still a couple of Pokemon that he brought last time. Maurice sticks with what he knows. He's sticking with these two Pokemon. And I like that because a Thunder Wave onto his Ashen is really nice here. Like, Giovanni does have the option of the fake up of the Behemoth Blade into the Grimstone, which Maurice really does have to respect. A Kyogre switching like he did last time into Behemoth Blade was pretty good for that. And he saved the Grimstone till a, bit, a little bit later to get some screens up. Um, so, which made a, obviously a key difference for the uh, Zapdos in the end game. But we're seeing a turn one Dynamax. So I imagine this is almost certainly Maurice's Zapdos, which is going right on the offensive. There's no Zapdos on Giovanni's end to Eerie Impulse set. It's going on the offensive and it's probably going to hit really hard. Yeah, really hard and, and likely into that Rillaboom. And it could be that Maurice is removing the one piece that, uh, oh, wow. Okay, well, the fake out going into the slot, which we didn't expect there, maybe, uh, Giovanni predicting a switch out there. We get the Thunder Wave off onto the Zacian that didn't manage to appear in game one. Airstream goes off onto the Rillaboom, gets the knockout. And I believe I saw, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that the Zacian was fully paralyzed that turn. Uh, quite possibly. Yeah, 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 yeah there it is. There it is. Okay. <laughs> There's the full power, uh, which is not ideal for Giovanni. That was potentially likely a behemoth blade into the grim Star, which would have been a huge ko or maybe a play rough into the zapdos so that's really unfortunate for giovanni because that would have been a key amount of damage so an immediate offense swing into maurice's uh, side of the field here and because of that uh speed boost that zapdos has on that end it makes giovanni if he brought his zapdos a little bit hard to get off an eerie impulse but we can already see that he's switched things up a bit because he's brought his kyogre this time that he hadn't brought in game one 
Yeah, we'll have to see if Maurice had uh, brought the Rillaboom or not in this game. Kyoga reasonably going for the Dynamax on Giovanni then. He's really, now that he's already taken uh, a Pokemon knockout against him, he does have to go on the offensive and start putting pressure on. Light screen coming out from Maurice, just wanting to make that Max Geyser do as little as possible. As a Max Lightning comes out onto the Kyoga, doesn't do too much, looks like an Assault Vest that that Kyogre is holding there, able to shrug off the damage pretty well overall. And the Max Geyser coming out in return, coming from that Kyogre into that Zapdos, taking it to just below 50%. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like it's in Behemoth Blade from range from this station. Yeah, that's a really bulky Kyogre that takes it so well. And yeah, there it is. Breaking through the paralysis, Sashin is able to pick up that knockout before Maurice can make the most of his three Dynamax turns. It's only two, and like, and even a Max Lightning from this legendary Zapdos is still not even like doing a third of damage. It looks like to this Dynamax Kyogre. So, uh, Giovanni switching it up to that Kyogre seems to be really putting in the work. However, has Maurice brought his Rillaboom? Is the question, uh, which we have not seen yet. I'm so I'm wondering if he's actually left it at home like he did in game one and Giovanni's really made use of that by bringing his own Kyogre with uh, nothing really obviously that's going to check it because the Zapdos is now down it is and uh, yeah now it's a, a real question on how these players uh, really react to the situation Zacian going on the defensive going for a protect and a thunder wave launching itself out into the Kyogre we'll have to see if that's able to move this turn as a water spout comes out from Maurice's side of the field does go into that Kyogre with a light screen on the field. I'm not sure this Max Lightning, even with electric terrain, is going to be enough to knock out Kyogre on Maurice's side of the field. Not even close. But one thing's for sure, that water spout is going to be not doing enough damage to knock out the Zacian next turn. Yeah, I think it's a really key point, actually. It does allow Zacian to get up a get off another really big attack, which is could be a beam of blade into the Grimsnarl for the knockout or into the, or a play rough into the Kyogre. But the screens are really seem to be putting in the work. And, and with another Spirit Break, Kyogre on Giovanni's end is not going to be doing a whole lot of damage and likely not picking up a KO. Origin Pulse comes out from Maurice's Kyogre, doing a great chunk to the Zacian, but the Zacian Ooh. gets a second full paralysis. However, the Kyogre manages to break through, goes for the Max Lightning, uh, still electric terrain boosted, and looks like it's, that Kyogre is now in range of another one. Yeah, kind of happy if you're Maurice that that's a Max Lightning and not a Thunder because I think the odds start to become in your favor to get a full para oh, get a paralysis with Thunder if it attacks more than once. Uh, free time, I think, is the charm way where it's starting to to look really quite good. But uh, now looking at this position, we saw the uh, saw quite a fun interaction. We saw an Airstream turn one. Uh, that then all of the paralysis, meaning that the Grim Snarl on Maurice's side of the field is faster than both Zacian and Kyogre, which not something that we get to say too often, um, but does make a big difference because that Spirit Break went into the Kyogre first and allowed Kyogre on Maurice's side of the field to stay that bit more healthy. Yeah, and there goes Spirit Spirit Break. It's not quite enough to pick up the knockout on this Kyogre, but if Maurice can go for his water move and hit both, which he does, Ooh, yeah. he gets a huge double knockout here. Zacian and Kyogre get completely knocked out, both paralyzed. Maurice has all the speed control and all the power and the accuracy to be hitting his moves. Mm, and it really will depend on what's in the back for Giovanni. Almost certainly going to be that Zapdos. And uh, yeah, that's going to... It's going to struggle a little bit, I think. We're here. It won't do too bad against the Kyogre, especially at that HP range. Uh, it's, it's nearly knocked out, and Zapdos will likely be able to finish the job. But Zapdos isn't going to break through that Grimmsnarl very quickly, and all the while, Grimmsnarl is going to be able to use that Spirit Break, reduce Zapdos's special attack. And, of course, we saw there the Kyogre actually managing to hang on, well-trained by Maurice. Uh, living on seven hit points and unlikely to be a roll there as Origin Pulse does connect with the Zapdos. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Maurice Utek is going to take the regional championships here in Bremen. Congratulations to Maurice. Well played to Giovanni. And it is going to be a German taking home the crown in Germany. And what a title to do it exactly for that. What and what a run he's